All right, so here's where you would accept people when they come in. Um, so now it's showing two. Why is it so slow? Okay, so this person is here, so you admit. Rob is here. Admit. And now somebody's coming in there. Greetings, Rob. How's it going? So far, so good. Hey, Alan. Hey, Phil. So we're being recorded already, huh? We got to watch what we say. <laughs> <laughs> no more than usual. <laughs> Can you hear us? Yes, we can. <laughs> So you just have to check on the side to keep on moving people. And now I'm not sure we are recording. So it's recording. Hi, Rick. Hi, Alan. And everybody else? <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear us? Let me call Paul. Okay, we have a. Um, so um, um, I think we'll wait another minute or two. What, when do we meet in person, do you think, Alan? Uh, it depends on the select board they right now. Hi there, town committee. <laughs> um, right now, what what's, um, we're waiting for is the um, select board to make a decision and also the part of the problem is they don't have enough meeting space, enough meeting room. You remember that we met in uh, uh, two so fairgrounds for quite a while. So let's see, who do we have here in the town committee? We have uh, Phyllis, I see. Uh, there's Charlie. We have um, Phyllis, who's with you there? Oh, she's muted. Sorry. Um, 
Okay, well, it's 4.03, so let's get started. Um, We're missing we, our have a quorum. We do have a quorum present. And uh, who are we missing? We're missing that. We're missing our secretary. Yeah, well, our secretary is on his way back from Connecticut. Oh. Um, he was off for the weekend and he's uh, on a, trying to make a boat, the uh, five or whatever, the boat tonight. So um, anyway, he won't be here. That's why we're, we've started the recording. So he'll be able to take the minutes from the, the recording of it. Okay, well, let's, uh, let me call a meeting of the Roads and Right of Way com uh, Committee to order for April 19th, 2022. I declare we have a quorum present and uh, first item of business is public comment. Is there any public comment? Seeing none. Uh, second item is approval of minutes from March 15th. Those minutes were distributed back um, shortly after our meeting. And I would, oh, hi, Ed. Hello. And hello. I would entertain uh, um, a motion to approve those minutes from March. Make a motion to accept the minutes for the March meeting. Okay, we have a motion and Rick, was that a second or? A... About a second, sure. Okay. You got it. Right. Snooki was so any... quick. <laughs> <laughs> any quick any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. Uh, all of in uh, favor, aye. 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 Right. Unanimous. I call that unanimous. Um, Ken Bogrand, I, I don't believe Ken is going to be able to attend. He's pretty swamped with town meeting issues and all the other um, road stuff. Um, so we won't have that report from Ken. Um, I believe there's nothing, um, nothing new <laughs> on his schedule. Okay, the map project number, uh, item number four. Um, Lee and I did a verification <laughs> of the existing monuments in Sconset. We went out to Baxter Road um, and determined that we need, um, uh, I forget how many, but we need uh, several other uh, flush monuments uh, posted out there. And um, the flush monuments uh, we can do ourselves uh, or <laughs> one of us can do it. Um, I put in all of the all of the flush ones so far, and it's you know pretty straightforward. The upright monuments we need um, assistance from the DPW to install those. Um, those monuments weigh four to five hundred pounds a piece, so we need some sort of a machine to lift them, um, get them, and so on. The way that we did the 30 some that we have in the ground already, uh, we had volunteer help um, with a bobcat and we went around and got those hoisted and physically dug the holes. We did that ourselves as a committee. Um, I talked with, um, <clears throat> Really talk with oh Steve and I think that Charlie uh, I talked with you about the monuments. Um, is it possible um, to have the DPW um, do those with a work order? I think there are six monuments yet to go in the <clears throat> ground, or four to go in, and two of them we want to move. Yeah, I think we should be able to facilitate that. Okay, so the the way to proceed with that would be to schedule it, Charlie, with you, and yeah, work you, you out want to give me uh, an overall list, and I can put the I can get with Mo, and we'll uh, we'll get the work orders drawn up. Okay, great. Um, as I say, uh, 
after we did Sconset, we went around to some of the other monuments to verify that they were still in place and so on. Uh, Warren's Landing is in place. Maya Com not Maya Comet, um, Madakisham Valley Road. Um, that one is in place. Um, and the there are a couple Oh, the Hobart Avenue ones. We need to, that's where uh, we need to install two upright ones, one at um, Willard Street and one at uh, Henry Street. Those two um, did have a flush monument and the flush monuments are gone. I think it's partly because the angle of the sand and so on. So we'll put upright monuments at those, those two. Um, so beyond that, as I say, what, what, what uh, we were trying to do is to mm. ground truth, uh, or that's, I hate to use that term, uh, to just verify that in fact, the monuments that show up on our chart for the map project are indeed in place <laughs> with the exception of those six monuments that we have yet to install. Um, so that will be the next step in uh, as far as the monuments go, and that will complete one of those sections of the the five different categories of um, uh, markers that we want to uh, have on our um, our map. Alan. Yes, correct. Right. Uh, just a quick question related to the monuments. So on Baxter Road, you must have a list of those that need monuments that don't have them now. And maybe That's you could just share that with us so we know which. And I assume you're talking about ways between, you know, the road and the path. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, that's correct. Um, the the one that isn't or one of the ones that isn't marked is the Oh God, I forgot the name of it. Uh, the very first street that you, um, yeah. Nosegay? Yeah, Nosegay, that's the one, Nosegay. thank you. <laughs> there is a, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Some people are knowing, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Well, I, that's why we have such a, a good committee here is <laughs> because we have a lot of knowledge. Um, the one at Nosegay, there is a flush one off the path at Nosegay. And the question was, uh, where do we put the um, other monument? Do we want an upright monument at Nosegay or do we want a flush monument in what's now the driveway to, I think the three houses that are off of Nosegay. Um, so that's a decision we need to 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 make whether to put you know as I say a flush monument or an upright monument at that point. Um, the other one is at Rosalie. Uh, there we need to put a flush monument there. Also, again, there's a driveway right in the middle of where the way is to go in. So I think. We can probably do that with a well. We <laughs> we can't really put an upright monument on the private property on either side of the um, path. So that that will be a flush one as well. And uh, I forget what the other one is. Emily has two of them in. Uh, the one at the end of the line has a has a flush monument at both ends of the line as well. So, yes, Phil. Did we talk about? I mean, the fact of the matter is, a flush monument is essentially. I think we've sort of you know, it, it's a different statement than it if you put in a vertical monument. Right. And so by putting in a flush monument, it's sort of like we put down a marker, but it, it, you know, the public is certainly not going to know about it or see it. It's just there. Whereas, you know, if, if, if we are interested in making, you know, 
making sure the public knows that that is a public way, I would think it would have to be a, you know, a vertical one. Well, we um, debated about that when we were doing these monuments um, earlier on. Now, the, the one, both of the ones that I just mentioned in um, the one at Nose and the one at uh, Rosalie Avenue, they're right in the middle uh, of a driveway that goes back to the houses. So the problem there is if we put in upright monument, we couldn't put it in the middle of the driveway because it would block the, you know, block the traffic going in. Um, and there's not enough, wait a minute. Um, uh, so in both cases, because the driveway starts at the pavement and goes in, um, the alternative to put an upright sign would be to, uh, an upright monument would be to put it on private property. It would be on the private property of, um, you know, either a butter. So it definitely doesn't work at Rosalie uh, for the one at Nosege, it would be possible because there is there is another sign by the telephone pole and so on. So that one could be an upright one. The question is, the reason we put the flush ones along the path is because people are walking along the path and they're quite visible. You know, so that that's why we did, we did those. Yes, Ed. Um, I agree with Phil about the statement, but there's also, um, is Nosegay, uh, would you consider that a main access point for people walking? I, I'm not sure I would, but I... No, no, if, it isn't. If, if it were to be, I would I would argue for the vertical, but if it's not, I think it would be sufficient. Yes, it is. I see a lot of people going in there every day. There we go. And pick up the path there. Right. Trying to get into it down on Broadway. As opposed to going in from the village down um, yeah. Front Street? Yeah. yeah, a lot of them go up. And Nosegate is a public way. It uh, is, yeah. Well, they're all public. Uh, all the ones we've marked are public. Um, in <laughs> some of them are 10 feet wide. Um, Nosegate is actually a, a road that, uh, you know, yeah. a 30 foot way. Yes, uh, Ed? With Snooky's um, East End knowledge as, as well, um, do people, do you find they're mainly walkers going in there or do you find they're trying to park on the side of the road and then leave their cars and walk down there? No, no, they're mostly walkers. Good, okay. Well, if that's the case, because we wouldn't want to encourage, obviously, parking in places that... Yeah, you know. exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the driveways are very private down there, so... Well, on the side of the road of Sanctity, you can sometimes see people parking and leaving their cars too, but you know. Um, yeah, well, that's true. But you don't want to encourage that either, so. Right. Well, I, I guess I'm, I'm not familiar with the, the two access points, but I guess my general comment is that these were public access points long before they were people's driveways. <clears throat> I'm sorry, say the last part of that, Phil? These were, if I'm correct, these were public access Correct. Long before the people put made driveways in there. Well, <laughs> the driveways were there before they were um, taken by the town as public ways. And I think that's why the ways are only 10 feet, but they're in the middle of a driveway. Um, <laughs> Oh. Um, okay, so um, all right, Ro Rosalie, I don't think anybody's going to be walking in there, or if they do, they, they, they'll see it as they do at the end of the path where the, the path ends. There's a break there in the, um, the privet hedge that goes in. It's a pretty narrow entrance. And that's why we decided to put a uh, flush one there because it is uh, visible. There's an opening there. And of course, they all of those have the flush monuments on the path side as you're walking along the bluff walk. 
So, um, yeah, said. Um, this might be a question that other people already know the answer to, but the um, I know we have only two options with flush versus vertical. Um, might there ever be a third option of, um, let's say, one that's low and kind of just comes up a bit at an angle or something like that, where you actually can see it better, but then flush, but it's not as tall and obtrusive as, you know, as, as a vertical monitor? Are we, are we tied into just those two models of identity? No, we're not. We, we can pretty much do anything. Like one of the ones on Holbert Avenue, um, uh, I think it's on Willard's, either Willard or Henry, does have a sign that the DPEW put up. It says public you know, it's a, one of those metal signs. And um, I think it's tacked up on a telephone pole or it's something. <laughs> um, anyway, so there, you know, so we could do something like that. Um, but uh, yeah. All right. Well, um, I'll review, I'll review the, um, the one at Nosegay gay and see if in fact that one should be you know see how how uh, see how an upright one would fit into that uh, that spot there um all right what, what else oh and uh uh ed in answer to your question also uh, remember the original monuments that were put in are concrete, those concrete bounds. Wow. Some of them have the county um, road, you know, bronze I, thing. In it, and, and some of them don't. Some of them just say public way. Uh, for example, the one at Dix Street, that's um, the one right after Charles Street on um, yeah. Hubbard Avenue. <laughs> That one is simply a concrete one that says public way in it. So, yeah, there, there are other iterations of the signs that we could use. Um, That's good to know, though, the medallion ones, no one in the public really knows what they mean. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, the other concrete ones do say public way. For example, there are a number of them out in Madiket. Um, as you go down Cambridge Street, there are actually four, four of the old concrete monuments um, that are there. Unfortunately, what happens with the concrete ones is that over time, the rebar inside probably freezes and expands and contracts. And so uh, those tend to uh, be in pretty tough shape. However, they are, you know, readily identifiable as public way. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. um, okay, so I'll, I'll um, circle back on that and uh, I'll meet with Charlie as far as uh, setting up a schedule to put in those upright monuments. Okay, anything else on, on item five? The map project. Oh, and maybe uh, I'm not sure it's specific on the map, but just a general question. The mm -hmm. you know town meeting passes these articles, um, giving permission uh, to the select board to proceed on takings of a, a number of ways. Correct. Uh, and they and they've been doing you know for a long time. <clears throat> I I recall a uh, you know a listing of them and you know an excel spreadsheet or something so someone could keep track of them and find out what happened to them and it seems to me it would be prudent for us to get a copy of that i mean someone could go back and copy them all out of the each annual town meeting to make a list but you would think the town has such a list and what action was taken or not taken on each specific way that was addressed in the articles and when, um, yeah, no, exactly. Um, all of the monuments that we have put in, we do have the documentation for. Um, now, the ones, Rick, that I think you're referring to are the ones that the town has 
um, taken be fairly recently. And I think those are on our list of, of where we're going to put those monuments. Um, but, you know, Alan, I, I, I think there are some, there might well be some older ones that action was never taken on it and, and we may not know about it. That's all I'm asking. Maybe our town assessor knows uh, where, where such a list might be. You know, it, it's, uh, it would be very helpful, I would think, for managing the town's sort of inventory of authorizations yeah. in general, you know? I think Erica Mooney has a list in, in Libby's office. Yeah, that would make sense. It's just good, seems to me good practice to know what you've got and what, you, what you've done with them. That's all. Okay. I'll follow up with Erica on that. Um, to, to, yeah, to see, see if there is the list of public ways, as we know, we've all seen that list and it's on our website. And um, by the way, the, the, um, the list of the public way monuments that we installed is also on our website. Um, and I believe, I'm, I'm just trying to think because I know when we found all the concrete monuments, the ones at Warren's Landing, uh, the ones at uh, Madiket, and the, like the one at Dix Street and so on. Um, hmm. All right. Um, <laughs> we'll see. One of the things, Rick, that we're looking for, of course, are those unmarked ways. Um, that's how we, you know, we right. found the ones that, that we're doing. Um, but that's a good idea. I'll check with Erica and see if she has a list. It's, it, it's a good way to cross check between what we're doing yeah. and what the town authorized. That's all. Exactly. Exactly. It's kind of like uh, our request to um, Jeff Carlson at, uh, you know, as far as the, the, um, <laughs> the chapter 91 licenses and so on. Right, but I suspect this is more likely to get an answer. <laughs> I, I, I would suspect, although we're still, we still have no definitive public way list. Yeah. Um, you know, that's one of the things that we're, we're working on now. Um, okay, that project, Hubbard Avenue. All right, uh, anything else on item five, the map project? that one. Uh, oh, it's, okay, as far as the plan and so on. How about uh, number six, chapter 91, the uh, recommendation of the select board um, as far as a record of the licenses um, <laughs> and the, the, the missing ones. There are two major construction, well, actually there are three major construction projects on Hulbert, um, no, I'm sorry, Easton Street that are underway. Um, and of course they are all supposed to have public, um, public way issues. Um, so <laughs> I happened to notice those uh, when I was walking down Easton Street uh, over the weekend and um, I didn't see any indication as I walked back onto uh, those, the three projects that are underway there um, as far as notification. So that, those would be three we could check right away. There's the one at Washington Street Extension, the first, um, uh, I think they're condos that you come to on the left. They did some work on the, the, uh, on the, the bulkhead uh, last year. And I, didn't, I walked up there um, again last week sometime and there was no indication of any public way um, or any chapter 91 notification there. Um, so there, there are several other ones like that. There's one at Commercial Wharf, um, the next to last house before you get to Petrol Landing. Um, 
there's no <laughs> no indication of public access allowed there. And of course the porch is hanging out so you can't get by there at low tide. So those are some of the ones that um, um, we're aware of that, that you know, we should follow up on. Yes, I add. What about the one down Easton Street that had to go through the Chapter 91 process that's being worked on right now, near right near the White Elephant? Yeah, exactly. That was the key one that I was uh, focused on. There's no indication now. Wow. And um, the used to be able to, you can walk along the front of the White Elephant, uh, all their buildings there. And then you come to the end. You used to be able to um, go down onto, there's a little beach there at that corner, and then you have to walk along the top of the bulkhead to get down the rest of it. Um, again, uh, we've asked for um, if, if there are, um, uh, <laughs> if anyone is filed uh, for um, you know um, chapter 91 on any of those and uh, I haven't heard back from Jeff Carlson as to whether uh, any of those have um, chapter 91 yes Ed that particular one should because the first deal that was in place for it fell apart because of the, the, the time period for the chapter 91 and I'm assuming that the length of time it took to close a deal at least got the chapter 91 started or in place or a light at the end of the tunnel or something like that right exactly exactly that is the one with a little beach at the end of it too exactly <laughs> yeah exactly. and of course now there's a fence at the end of the um the property belonged to the white elephant so you can't you used to be able to just sort of hop down from the bulkhead, get on the beach, and then get up to the other bulkheads and go that way. Now you have to hop over a fence. Um, Phil? Is there, in the buildings department, when they issue the, uh, the approval to continue for, for construction, is chapter 91 part of the conditions for the approval? <laughs> Good question. Um, it should be anytime there's waterfront property there's you know they're supposed if, to be... if there isn't then there is absolutely you know we're, we're, we're just sort of you know we're just talking i mean that, there's no there, 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 there's no there's well, no leverage we've raised that question with jeff carlson um over the past year um and trying to get a list of the chapter 91 licenses and so on some of them are clearly marked. For example, the land bank, every time the land bank does something, uh, we're required to put up um, a plaque on whether it's a, um, a dock or whether it's a, um, um, a boardwalk or anything like that. And it has on it, um, you know, specifically uh, permission is allowed for fishing, fowling, navigation, and also strolling. Strolling is on those, um, at least the recent ones that have been put up on <laughs> the land bank uh, piers. You can find that at our, um, um, the, the Bachman dock at the end of. Um, um, so, but, but, so what I'm hearing though is that so that is not, although then Ed, why would that deal have fallen apart? I mean, it's, it's either a requirement, it's not a requirement. Well, it depends on the lawyers and how, how thorough the lawyers are, right, Ed? Um, that's part and parcel of it. It also depends upon if, if there's bank financing, for instance, um, in where the process could, and I'm not, 100% sure on this, but it is a good question. Um, it might come in the planning board, like when they did the Great Harbor Yacht Club, for instance, or obviously when they redid the Dreamland and things like that. It might be, it might come out in the planning board kind of decision for a pro for a project. This particular project down on Wash, um, excuse me, on Easton, they've subdivided the lot. They've kept the historic house. They're going to pick up and move that a lot. And then they're going to build a whole other house. So there probably will be, um, for safety reasons, there probably will be more than a fence there for a while. But 
Um, I suspect that there must, there's, there's something, you know, to go to the planning board and do all that, they, there must be a requirement to mark the chapter 91. I, would, hmm. but I guess that's a question for someone on the planning board or in the building department. Uh, uh, otherwise, it's just a requirement that you can choose to obey or recognize or not recognize. No, it's not. <laughs> not there's, no, uh, there's no stick, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. It it um, as with any violation, um, it needs to be pointed out to the powers that be the the regulatory board, uh, which is why we've been working with the conservation commission with the concom because the concom presumably is the keeper of those records of the chapter 91 licenses that are issued. And as I say, we've been working on this for um, well over a year, it seems like with the chapter 91. And um, it's only been recently that we've, uh, how can I put this, that, that We've had a positive working relationship with uh, the the con uh, with uh, the not the concom with Jeff Carlson the kind of anyway um, so the, Jeff Carlson would be the one who should be familiar with this and um, he he spoke. Uh, the Civic League did a forum about Chapter 91 a number of months ago, and Jeff participated in that, as well as two um, people from the uh, state DEP who talked about, um, <laughs> talked about Chapter 91 access and so on. So, as and, they, and by the way, they couldn't answer our questions. <laughs> Yeah, well, exactly, and that that's part of the that's part of the issue. Um, I think that we certainly got Jeff Carlson's attention because he has been more attentive um, to you know to the issues um, that that we've pointed out. You know, if there's supposed to be public access, then there needs to be a Chapter ninety one license wherever one is. Uh, you know, <laughs> is required. Um, and it doesn't always happen, I guess, is the way to put it. Um, and in, who knows what the reasons might be. Generally speaking, I would assume that no one has really uh, brought it specific, uh, brought a specific case to the attention of the Conservation Commission. So, Yes, Ed. So, Alan, you would say that, for instance, with this project, was just used Easton because it's happening right now, um, or it could be Petrol Landing for that matter. But the um, um, Jeff, it, the Natural Resources—that's he's the director of Natural, natural Resources. Yeah, that's sorry. What we're for. Um, is that where we would be? Like, if, if we were to get his ear, he would know whether there was a Chapter Ninety One file for that particular property. Well, he should. Put it that way. Um, he he doesn't always have that information, or at least in the past, he hasn't always had that information um, available. In other words, uh, I've asked, or we, the committee, has asked for a list of the Chapter Ninety One licenses uh, because, again, you would assume that there is a list of them somewhere. Um, just like you would assume there's a, a list of the public and the private ways. But as we we found out there, there is an always. Yes, Charlie? I'm just cruising the mass.gov website here. And according to the state webpage, uh, the Registry of Deeds should have a list of all Chapter 1 general licenses. You got to go through each deed. Yeah. The, I'm sorry, the registry of deeds. Yeah. That's what that, according to the to mass.gov. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> so, right. so, Charlie, just to make sure I understand, um, they're suggesting at, at, at the page you're on 
to go to the local deeds office. And yeah, so uh, I just I just punched in list of you know uh, chapter ninety one license lists for Massachusetts, and it brought right. me up to the waterways, and it gives you you know by county on the state page, uh, basically everyone's list of you know on who to call, and for us it's the registry of deeds. So does that does that page take you to a list or take you to? I'm not quite sure. No, it just, it just lists. Um, you got to go pull the deed. Uh, maybe. No, I got you. Okay. Counties. So 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 we need to find a way to go to our registry, I think, and see if we can find the search terms to find all Chapter ninety one licenses that have been filed against properties in Nantucket. In effect. That's what it looks like. And it looks like there are two different for inland and coastal waterways. Yeah. Hmm. Rick, I think, Rick, I think that um, at that session that we had the people from Boston involved in, the, the, the response of the response that I heard, and I'm not completely sure it was correct, was that those are on file up in Boston. But they're very disorganized. <laughs> right, but they're supposed so to be. So if you're really interested in seeing those deeds, you got to go up to Boston or see those licenses. You got to go to Boston and then not sure how to find them. Well, well, that, that may be. But in theory, they've been filed in the deeds in order to right. uh, be, a, be effective against the property. But Ed, Ed's got a point. Yeah, Ed. I, I think uh, we're on the right track. I mean, I, but I think that what you have to do is you have to go property to property, deed to deed, and and look. And since we know there's some new projects going on, I guess we could pull the deeds on those properties and see if they've been filed or where they are. And some of the deed, you know, some of this stuff is, you know, if it, if it ha involves land court at all, land court's way behind. So who knows where they are these days? But yeah. but you would think that they would be registered at some point in the deed itself. So if we know, I don't think would it might be hard to find a whole list of random properties without an, a lot of deed title work, but if we're looking for specific properties, maybe it's as easy as pulling the deed. In that case, I'll go down and pull a couple of deeds and see if I can come up with anything. That's, that's a great idea. Uh, years ago, this is probably six, seven, maybe 10 years ago, um, what one of the ways that we started this project was, um, oh God, we had, uh, there was a woman on our committee who did a lot of deed work. Um, yeah, was it Annie on? Uh, Annie who? Bissinger? Yes, Annie Bissinger, she's the oh, one. She's and uh, awesome. she, she could, um, she was a big help in doing that to locate ways that had been taken but weren't marked and so on. And that was sort of what led, that was sort of the impetus of this whole uh, monument project. Um, again, going to the going to the registry of deeds and, and checking. I think Ed raises a good point. If uh, we have specific properties where there seems, there would appear to be an issue uh, to go to the registry and see if in fact there is one on file. Um, hmm. That's, yeah. Uh, we've been going to Jeff Carlson and asking, um, you know, is there a list and, um, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, registry of deeds. Great. All right. <laughs> um, that, that will be, uh, yeah. All right. We'll check that out. Uh, what else have we got here? Eastern Street, Commercial, Washington Street Extension. All right, so um, I have a list of locations, as I say, the few of them that I mentioned before, and um, that might be a good place to start. Just go to the Registry of Deeds and um, <laughs> pull those particular deeds. And, and Although it's not that simple, if you've ever read the deeds and so on. Um, Good. All right, Ed, would you be interested in checking on a, um, you know, 
if, if we have a couple of properties. Yeah, why don't I start with the that one on the Easton because it's obviously an ongoing matter and see if, see what I find out there. And if I don't find anything there, obviously, then I'm not sure we're going to find something in some of the older ones, but we'll- Yeah, exactly. Who knows? I mean, no. they should Well, be. Jeff Carlson should be aware of that too, because as the director of natural science, yeah, he's supposedly the keeper of those, um, those records. So. But supposedly, you know, you, you can have a, a lot of records on a desk, if you know what I mean. And exactly. You can't, you can't find where it is, what you want sometimes, yeah. Exactly, right. Um, Alan, a good one would be to check would be what used to be Mrs. Sanford's. Because I noticed the house and the garage have been taken out of there, like they're going to put something new in. Right. It's, I think this, it was 10 Eastern Street, two up from the Coast Guard. Oh, oh, yes, right, down by the Coast Guard Station, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that lot has all been cleared out. Yeah, I know. I that's one of the ones that I went down to uh, check when I was doing my East in, or Eastern Street walk the other day. So, a lot happening on Eastern Street. <laughs> yeah, there is. It's incredible. <laughs> incredible. Okay, well, good. There's. Uh, I've got a list of things to follow up on uh, there. And Ed, if you can find out, see what's going on um, for the one next to the White Elephant, that'd be great. Good. Okay, anything else on that item? Item number six. Uh, next item, uh, sidewalk projects update. Um, the DPW is busily working away at uh, a number of different projects around the island. <laughs> um, Charlie, do you have any update on uh, sidewalks? Normally we have Ken Bogran, but Ken, Ken uh, couldn't make it this afternoon. Um, not really, to be honest with you. I know there are, we've talked about some in town repairs, and I just know them because the permits have come across my desk of sidewalks in town that are getting you know repaired in the upcoming weeks. Um, and I know they've done, all, they've done some up on Upper Main Street, where I think with a couple of trees fall over during winter, and those have all been right. picked up and put back together. But that's uh, all I know of those at the moment. Yeah. Ed, they were uh, they were working yes, uh, yesterday and last week, I believe, as well. Victor and his guys on uh, India Street uh, in front of like proprietors in that area, company of the Calder in that area, where that is. Yeah. That was going on, and I see that they've moved down a little bit, so they must be kind of working on that area, that street. And they, yeah, I think they're going down India, and I think they're turning the corner on South Water. Got you. I believe. But that mayor, yeah, I know so we were talking about something. whether or not we can get that done before Daffodil Weekend. You've yeah. obviously planted some new trees around too, and like even on Main Street, I noticed there's been a little bit of better sidewalk work done around where the new trees have been planted too. So. All right. Yeah, there's a lot, uh, a lot of stuff going on. Um, now, rem yes, Ed. Sorry to be interrupting so much, but the um, where are we on one of our target properties along Pleasant Street? Now that all that land's been cleared for the garden out there, I mean that's kind of probably an opportune time to work hand in glove with the owner to do a sidewalk at the same time he's recreating a historical garden. That is part of it. Is there a discussion still ongoing with the owner there? Yes. Um, the owner of the property, again, this was about a year and a half ago. Uh, I met with Rob McNeil when he was uh, in charge and the property owner. And um, we discussed that um, in uh, I'm just trying to think who I was talking with. Uh, anyway, uh, I, the owner is preparing a garden. They're going to recreate an, um, uh, an 1800s garden that was there. They have a plan for it. It was written up in a magazine and that sort of thing. And they do plan to incorporate a sidewalk uh, 
on that portion of the property. Once you get past Gardner Perry Lane, then you're sort of out in the street right now. And um, um, so anyway, I, I know that there is a plan for a sidewalk. Uh, I know that there is also a plan for Sparks Avenue, um, the bike path or a sidewalk or something along there. And I think that that's partly what they were trying to connect uh, those two projects. But um, yeah, so anyway, in answer to your question, Ed, there is, uh, they are planning to uh, put that section, remember that's one of our missing sidewalk pieces, oh, wow. that and uh, there are three other ones that are, <laughs> yeah, Ed? You know, the Sparks Avenue one could also be, I know that, you know, there's a large project that's on deck before the uh, HTC and everything else to go in there. And, you know, the planning board and HTC often get developers to contribute to sidewalks, bike paths, everything else. Um, that might be a good time to exert a little bit of leverage when they get to a point where that project might be closer to being a, in an approvable shape, so to speak, to have the developer maybe work with the sidewalk there as well. I mean, I think that's, they often do things like that rather than putting in, they used to do bike path offsets and all sorts of things, things for developers. So I wasn't sure. Right. My understanding is that there is a plan to um, take Pleasant Street, the Pleasant Street and then Sparks Avenue, um, that there are sidewalks uh, in, in, there, there, there are projects for sidewalks on both of those areas, uh, Sparks Avenue and the Pleasant Street. Um, and I think it, it's in connection with other projects. For example, they, um, there's a, a plan for a rotary, uh, actually two rotaries. One, it's um, uh, Bartlett Road and Surfside Road. The other one at the corner of Surfside or Atlantic Avenue at that point in Prospect Street. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know that the plan has a sidewalk plan that goes along with those two roundabouts. So it could be that they're waiting. Um, so. But mm -hmm. there, is, there is a plan for sidewalks on, on both those streets and uh, including the missing piece that's on Pleasant Street. So that's, that's what I know. So um, I do know that there was a million dollars set aside for sidewalk uh, reconstruction. Remember this was um, several years ago they allocated, they, or the promise was they would allocate a million dollars a year for five years to concentrate on sidewalks, primarily in the old mm -hmm. historic district, the main, you know, main street downtown and so on. And um, that those plans, and there are plans to um, do those sidewalks, but uh, those, those aren't, you know, <laughs> The, the town is waiting to slot those projects in, but there is money available, as I understand it, for those particular projects. So, um, okay, anything else on streets and sidewalks? How about old, new, other business? Any member comments? <laughs> I've seen none. <laughs> Great. Um, all right. As I uh, said at the beginning of the meeting, uh, Lee will take a look uh, at the recording of the meeting, and he said he would draft minutes from this. So those minutes should be out um, in, in Lee's usual detailed and, and speedy manner. So we're very fortunate, by the way, to have Lee as secretary. You know, he does such a good job on uh, keeping the minutes and keeping us on track. So, all right, is there anything else to come before the committee this afternoon? 
Yes. Alan, just, just, just a question. Uh, town committee, yes. can we see this screen? Are they uh, just like coming on to join us as members of the public, I guess, which is great. Oh. No, the town committee are the, the people at the DPW um, oh. uh, who sign us in and so on. Again, I because, see. That's Charlie's team, maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, 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 the, that's the host for Zoom is the town committee. Uh, oh, host, right. right. Thank exactly. you. Yeah. And how about T. Netter? Uh, I don't know. She's the new... <laughs> The new person who is um, taking over roads and right of way uh, from Phyllis. Well, we welcome. Oh, here we go. Here's there she is. Hi. 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 <laughs> the camera doesn't work in my computer, so I have to yeah. get a, a camera so that I can be able to see. Oh, I just want to get her though. I'm I sure. just want to say hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> nice to meet you. And welcome. I was Thank into you. the DPW this morning and uh, met. <laughs> so yes, good. Um, so we'll be we'll be seeing her, um, and she's she's going to be the one who's taking over um, our running our committee from Phyllis. So <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Nice to meet you. All right. Good to meet you too. All right, is there anything else to come before the committee this afternoon? Seeing none, I declare we are at the end of our agenda and uh, the meeting is adjourned. Great, thanks, Alan. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Great, thank you. We need to second that motion. <laughs> yeah. I'll I make it done. You, you want to do a motion? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Okay. <laughs>